Good morning. Um, okay, so to get today, guys, we are going to, or good evening, whenever you're watching this, but um, we're going to uh, be dividing fractions. Um, and so we're going to start first on page 163. So I'm going to turn the camera, and so you can see. There we go. I'm going to get better at this. All right. There we go. It's lesson six on page 163 in your book. So um, it says three students are painting an equal part of an art mural. The art mural is half painted. What part of the whole mural has each student painted? So the first thing they want us to do is look at just the painted portion. And so it says that there were um, three students. So we're going to need to divide the painted part into three equal parts. Okay, so I'm going to first start with you know where it's completed okay and then I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it and look at where could I make three parts that are relatively equal um, I think I'm gonna divide it that might be an easy place to divide it and this might be another place to divide it I don't know if you can see those. I hate to paint, I hate to mark over their beautiful flowers, but there's roughly three parts. And so we're gonna need to divide the rest of the wall into the, the same um, size parts, okay? So that it's equal, the whole is equal and equally divided into parts that are the same size, okay. So we've got one, two, three parts here. We've got one, two, three parts there. It says place an X over each of the painted, uh, each part of the painted area. Okay, I'm gonna use something maybe that you can see a little bit better. I don't know if you can see that. There's one, there's two, and there's three. This represents the part um, each student is painted. And then it says divide the unpainted part into the same number of parts. Well, we've already done that because clearly I didn't follow the steps right there, but that's okay. And it says, what fraction of the whole mural has each student painted? So if one student painted one part here, that's one out of how many total parts? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's one six. So it, we can analyze this and go, okay, well, this is clearly half of the whole wall. And so half divided by three equals one sixth. It's also true that one half times one third is one sixth. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Did you, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say that again. If you had one half, half of the wall, divided by three parts, three girls, each girl or each person, did they say girls? They said students, sorry. Each student would paint one sixth of the entire wall, okay? Um, so it says compare and contrast the division problem and the multiplication problem. So on the mu multiplication part, it said one half times one third equals one sixth. Well, what what you know what I was able to see is that a you get the same answer for both of those, don't you? And so, in the division problem, you're dividing one half by three. In the multiplication problem, you're multiplying one half by the reciprocal of three by one third. Um, so we could say. And you might word yours differently from mine. Um, in both problems, the answer is one six. So when you divide 
divide one half by three or multiply one half by one third, which is the reciprocal of three. You get one sixth. Okay. I love that. Love, love, love it. Okay, going to the next side on page 164. Remember, at any point, if you need to pause the video, you need to go back and rewatch it. That's the beauty of having the video. Okay. Um, the key concept, you divide by a fraction. Guess what, guys? When you're dividing by a fraction, you're multiplying by its reciprocal. Okay. That's, that sums it all up. And that's right there. And they've given you an example with numbers. They've given you an example algebraically with variables there so that you can see um, easily how that works. Love it. Okay, right here it says find one half divided by three. So they took this first uh, model and they have one whole and they divided it into two equal parts so that they could show what one half looks like. Okay, that's this part right here. And then it says divide the whole into thirds. So they want you to go back and divide the whole thing into thirds. Okay, can you see that better? And we want to know how many thirds are in one half. Okay. And if you go back and look, there is one third here. And there's a half of a third. So one and one half is your answer. Now. I have a feeling you guys are going to, I don't know, some of you might prefer the model, some of you might prefer the, the actually the um, equation algorithm method. And so that's what this one's showing. You have one half divided by, I have to write it, one half divided by one third. And remember, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So that first fraction is going to stay the same. And we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of one third, which would be 3 over 1, which is 3, but in this case we're multiplying by fractions, so we need it to be in a fractional form. So 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 1 is 2, and our answer is 1 and 1 half. Remember that 3 halves looks like this. Divide 2 into 3 goes 1 time, which is 2. You have 1 left over. That 1 is going to be your whole number. This Remainder is going to be your numerator, and the 2 is the divisor, okay? Looking right here, 1 fourth times the reciprocal times 8 thirds, okay? Um, 1 times 8 would be 8, and 4 times 3 is 12, and then we can simplify that. Um, 8 and 12 are both divisible by 4. 8 divided by 4 gives you 2. And 12 divided by 4 gives you 3. So your answer for that one is 2 thirds. B, you have 2 thirds times the reciprocal, which would be 8 thirds. 2 times 8 is 16. 3 times 3 is 9. How many times does 9 go into 16? Once. 16 minus 9 is going to be 7. And our answer is 1 and 7 ninths. Okay. I'm going to skip C. I ran out of room. And I'm running out of time. Um, okay. On the next side. Um, here's a real world problem that they've shown with a, a model. And now they want you to, um, they're wanting you to write a real world problem for three fourths divided by eight. Um, and, or divided by one eighth, I'm sorry. Then, um, okay, I'm just going to move on to this one down at the bottom where it says divide a fraction by a whole number. 
So the same thing is true for these. It says 5 divided by 10. You're going to multiply by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of a whole number? If it's 10, it's going to be 1 tenth. If it's 13, it's going to be 1 thirteenth. Um, and then you're going to do it the same way. What they're showing you here, I love, and I've kind of been putting off showing this to you, but I love that they're showing it to you here, is that you can simplify your problem before you multiply. Um, some people say cross cancellation. Um, you'll probably hear me say simplify before you multiply. And you look to see if your factors have any greatest common if there are any greatest common factors between the numbers. So looking at um, looking at this one, I'm going to show you how I would write it. You look at the numbers that are diagonally across from each other. 7 and 1 are not divisible by anything other than 1, so it's not going to benefit you to divide by 1 because you would get the same thing that you already have. 5 and 10 are both divisible by 5. So watch this. You can go 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And then I always circle my numbers. 1 times 1 is 1. 7 times 2 is 14. What this does is makes your life a lot easier, okay, if you understand this. Uh, because it makes your numbers smaller. You don't have to do as much simplifying after you've multiplied. In most, most um, instances, it will take care of that and you might not have to. Sometimes if you don't choose the right factor, if you don't choose their greatest common factor, then you will still have to simplify at the end. Um, okay, let's look at this one. Eight ninths. Remember, we're going to do 8 ninths, and we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 4 is going to be 1 fourth. Now look, 4 and 8. I know that 4 and 8 are both divisible by 4. So 4, and I'm going to put divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Okay. 9 and 1, we can't do anything. 2 times 1 is 2, 9 times 1 is 9, and that's your answer in simplest form. Okay? Otherwise, you would have had 8 over 36, and then you would have had to simplify that. Um, 4 fifths divided by 8 would be 4 fifths times the reciprocal, which is 1 eighth. And same thing. We've got 8 and 4 again. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 1 and 5 would stay the same. 1 times 1 is 1. 5 times 2 is 10. Okay. 12 thirteenths divided by 4 would be 12 thirteenths times the reciprocal, which is 1 fourth. Okay. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Multiply across, and we get 3 thirteenths. Okay. Um, I'm going to put the assignment in the uh, module, so look for those numbers that I want you to do in the module, and I will see you in class. And I hope that um, gives you a good understanding of, of uh, dividing fractions. Also, remember, I'm available, remember, I'm available at, let's see if I can flip this around, during your win time from 12.30 to 1.30. I'm also available. Um, you can send me questions in Canvas, um, and I can help you um, any way I can. So have an awesome day, and I'll see you later.